greatest eating competition, Glutton Bowl. Tonight, 34 world champion eaters from across the globe will attempt to push their stomachs to the limit as they vie for the title of the world's greatest eater. It's the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition. Welcome to Santa Monica, California, where this arena has been transformed into the world's biggest buffet. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Thompson. Joining me is the chairman of the International Federation of Competitive Eating, George Shea. Tonight is a competition the likes of which you have never seen, I promise you. We've assembled the cream of the crop, the top championship eaters from all around the world for the biggest eating contest ever. In total, nine rounds of gut-busting competition, $45,000 in cash, and three tons of food. There's butter, there's beef tongue, and a few things that aren't for the faint of heart or stomach. But George, no matter how unpleasant to win the big money, these competitors are gonna have to eat their fill and then some. They're gonna have to dig down, take a look at the man or the woman in the mirror, and determine if they have what it takes to go on. There is a no moment in competitive eating where the body says stop. Champions know how to continue. We're going to be breaking world records tonight, setting new ones, and here's how it is going to work. Our champion eaters will compete in seven preliminary rounds of competition. The top eaters from each one of those rounds is going to move on to the finals. In addition, the second place finalists from each one of those rounds earn the chance to compete in a wild card playoff. The winner of that round will also move on to the finals for a shot at $25,000 in cash and the title of Glutton Bowl champ. But it's not as easy as it sounds. The food that we've selected for the wild card round is something that you will not have in your refrigerator, I promise. We'll talk about what that is later on. Now it's time to meet the warriors who've been preparing for weeks to do battle tonight. For our first round of competition, these are your world champion eaters. From Staten Island, New York, he's the United Pickle Eating Champion. Weighing in at 202 pounds, crazy Kevin Lipsitz. Next, the current world matzo ball eating champion. From Jericho, New York, weighing in at 203 pounds, Russell Mad Dog Macover. Our third competitor is the 1999 Long Island Hot Dog Eating Champion from Oceanside, New York, weighing in at 238 pounds, Leon Justice Feingold. Next, the fastest hamburger eating champion on the East Coast. From Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing in at 205 pounds, Andrew Ace Goldstein. And finally, a four-time hot dog eating champion. From Copenhagen, New York, weighing in at 404 pounds, Eric Badlands Booker. Well, there they are, our first five champion eaters. Let's not wait any longer. Let's find out just what food these champions are going to be chomping on. Those are hard-boiled eggs, and you just saw the tremendous force that they all had coming down at once. They actually broke our bowl on stage. What 
will that force actually do to our competitors as they try to down egg after egg rapidly? Clearly, that was an example of albumin overload. Eggs are generally considered to be easy to handle. They're easy to bite, they're easy to chew, they don't absorb water. But in the stomach, in quantity, they have huge weight, and that's going to be difficult to handle. Well, this is a timed round, and the eaters are going to have to cram down as many eggs as they can before the final buzzer. And this is a good time to mention that these are professional eaters. George himself, professionally on the tour in the competition. Do not try this at home. This is a controlled environment. We have emergency medical personnel standing by. Please, tempted though you may be, do not try this at home. All right, they are on their marks. Let's get this competition going. from Long Island, New York, over 400 pounds. Everyone looks a bit smaller next to Eric. He's a man mountain. This man knows how to eat. He can eat 19, 20, his personal record, 24 and one half hot dogs and buns. He's the odds on favorite to win this Although competition. Although I should mention, George, he is not stuffing the entire egg in his mouth at one time. He's taking what I would call almost precision bites. He's using a two bite method. He's trying to move forward. He is very, very strong, can continue solidly throughout this entire contest. Russell Macover in position number one as you look at the stage on the far left. Russell with that almost rabbit-like bite on the eggs. He's already downed almost 10 eggs. Yes, well, Russell is using a very different style than Kevin Lipsitz on the far right of the stage. It's almost piranha versus locust. Kevin stuffs. He actually, when he gets going, he wets his face. When he's in competition, he's in his zone. His face is literally covered with the food stuff. And you're seeing Kevin take a lot of water in there. Obviously, that's part of his strategy to get all the egg clear of his throat. Eric Booker again in the center. He is the big man up there at the table. Now, Meanwhile, wait a second. Wait a second. Eric Booker with 17 no, scratched that 18 eggs, but Russell Mockover is at 16, and this is interesting. Mockover, he's a veteran out of the matzo ball circuit. This must be similar for him. It's an oval, not a circle, but he's eating this very, very well. That's a great point. Russell Mockover, who's given up 200 pounds to Eric Booker, is hanging with him. Obviously, his experience in that world of matzo ball eating has stood him in good stead here tonight. Now, wait a second. Leon Justice Feingold, who's a very, very accomplished hot dog eater, also has tried matzo balls, seems to be slowing. But the surprise here today, Russell Mockover and Andrew Goldstein also holding up very, very well. At this point, you'd have to say it's still anybody's contest, but Eric, Andrew, and Russell are ahead. Eric leads with 24, Russell next with 22, and you can see Andrew Goldstein with 19 thus far. Now, wait it, a second. Russell Mockover appears to be neck and neck, cheek and jowl with Eric Badlands Booker. This would be an enormous upset. People were not expecting that kind of a performance out of Mockover. Andrew Goldstein is just five off the pace of second place. That would be held at the moment by Russell Mockover in position one with 29 eggs. A He's now a dead tie, tie with Eric a Booker. Dead tie. We've got a tie on stage. Booker and Mockover, both with 29 eggs down. Eric Booker, Russell Mockover, neck and neck. They both have 30 eggs right now, 30 hard-boiled eggs. But wait a second, keep in mind that Russell Mockover has trouble at the end of a contest. He says he has to fight the urge to stop. I've seen Booker compete in long, long distance marathons. Meanwhile, Leon Feingold and Kevin Lipsitz, the two on the far right, are close and closing in on 20 eggs apiece. This is an interesting matchup here. I would have expected Kevin Lipsitz to be far ahead of where he is now, but he has, he is considered to have one of the strongest jaws in the sport, but I'm noticing a slight slowdown, what they call lock jaw, in the sport of competitive eating. There's a psychological aspect to it, of course, but there's also a physical aspect to it. You train with your arms, you train with your legs, you must train your jaw. Many of the competitors uh, use Tootsie Rolls, gum, other hard subjects. But Kevin Lipsitz should be used to this test. Eric Badlands Booker, 33 hard-boiled eggs. 
He seems to be slowly pulling ahead. Russell Mockover was at his heels earlier on, indeed had tied him, but seems to be slowing a bit as the contest progresses. Mockover's pace has slowed. He has just glanced over at Booker, sort of incredulously. You can see him thinking, trying to steal himself to continue. That is Mockover, you mentioned it before. It's so hard at this point to continue. Everybody on stage, though, has slowed considerably, George Shea. Well, they're clearly feeling the pain, the weight of the eggs. We saw what that can do. But wait a second. I see Andrew Goldstein may be suffering somewhat from this contest. No, but Andrew Goldstein is within one egg of closing it on second place. And I will remind you, second place gets you a spot in the wild card playoff. These people are covered in water, they are covered in egg white, but they are going to continue. Do not count out Andrew Goldstein, do not count out Russell Mockover. We're in a dead heat for second between Mockover and Goldstein. 31 eggs apiece. One minute to go, how many more can they cram down? Now this appears to be Eric Booker's match to lose. However, Russell Mockover and Andrew Goldstein must determine if they have the strength to continue. They have under a minute left, they must push forward if they want to get to that wild card round. Both fine gold and the crowd cheers as another egg goes down. Russell Mockover, Andrew Goldstein, absolutely in a tie. This may go to the judges to determine no, what would happen if both Mockover and Goldstein end up with the same number of eggs down, then what happens as far as the official determination goes? If indeed Richard Shea determines that they have the exact same number of eggs, this would go into a one-minute eat-off. It would be one minute, it would be eggs, and that eat-off would determine who goes to the wild card round. We are so close to the competition being finished. He is feeling pain. That is the buzzer, and what a spectacle that we have just seen. We have oh, a winner no. with oh, 37 no. eggs. Oh, Eric no. Badlands Booker, the that. glutton bowl egg eating champion. He will be moving on to our final round where he'll have a shot at $25,000 in cash and the title of glutton bowl champion. Eric Badlands Booker. His shirt front is soiled, but it's a badge of his victory here today. Let's take another look at exactly how he pulled that off. Slow and steady won this race. Two bites, some water, repeat, and Eric Booker chews his way into the finals. Real quick, let's eat, let's eat 30, 40, 50 more eggs. Something ball. Smile, work. Meanwhile, Russell McElroy manages to slip ahead of the rest of the pack for second place in a shot of the wild card seed. All right. Coming up, the gorging continues when we return with the Glutton Ball, the world's greatest eating competition. <laughs> As my friend Sergio from Rio says, Excuse me, did you say Sergio? From Rio. Yes. Your darkish, lightish hair? Uh, about this high? Heavy set, thin guy? You know Sergio. Yes. Come join us. <laughs> Sergio. <laughs> 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 Smearing off ice, premium malt beverage. Drink responsibly. All vehicle over. Super Troopers patrols a highway paved with laughs. Oh. The gags come fast and furious. Do we look like the two dumbest guys in the world to you? Broken Lizard Super Troopers. Rated R. Now playing only in theaters. From the makers of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater comes Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder where you can trick off of everything on the mountain. Yeah, just like in the real world. Ride eight different real world mountains. Choose from 10 top orders. Compete in all new multiplayer modes. Pull insane combos and trick off of everything. Yeah, everything. Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder. Rated E for everyone. Give me a uh, double bacon cheeseburger. Double bacon cheeseburger, it's for a cop. What the hell's that all about? You gonna spin it now? That look like you spit to you. Yeah. Burger pop! Super Troopers, rated R. Now playing only in theaters. Okay, guys. When you Sam Adams of the Baltimore Ravens helps the United Way by participating in first aid training developed to help kids succeed. Apply gentle pressure. 
Sam knows the meaning of the word success. Check the pulse and do not panic. Panic. To a child, a little of your time can make a lifetime of difference. That's why the Greenville Family Partnership sponsored a hike. Because kids with something to do are less likely to do drugs. Standing right in front of them. <laughs> Whether you're a good storyteller or a good listener, you can help. To find out about community drug prevention programs, call toll-free 1-877-KIDS-313. I can keep a kid off drugs. Fox Sunday, when Bart gets a new role model. Ooh, that's some fancy shoes. Will Homer become jealous? Well, I took the liberty of creating a new hero for your wall. That is just grotesque. An all-new Simpsons. Then, the boys leave Mom and Dad home alone. An adult needs to sign for the room. My little brother isn't feeling very well. He doesn't look that sick to me. <laughs> An all-new Malcolm in the Middle after The Simpsons at 8, 7 Central, Fox Sunday. Fox Tuesday on a special hour of That 70s Show. Kelso catches Jackie cheating. With the cheese guy! Will he fight for her? You're fine, cheese puff. How did you know my nickname? Or is it over forever? You've been acting like I don't exist. I sure know you exist now that you French the whole mall. All-new That 70s Show, part of a full hour starting at 8, 7 Central, Fox Tuesday. This March, Fox presents a new comedy about one man's search for love. Hey, Wendy. How are you? Perfect. Exactly as I planned. Respect. We have a new office mate. His name is Andy. Won't that be fun? We figured we'd just call you Big Andy. And anything <laughs> resembling an ordinary life. Hey, Big Andy. Why can't he be new Andy? Or I'll be Andy and he can be Black Andy. We can't run around calling somebody Black Andy. Anything's possible. Andy, what? Keep your eyes on his feet. When Andy Richter controls the universe, a new comedy premiering Tuesday, March 19th on Fox. Welcome back to the Glutton Bowl. Mark Thompson here along with George Shea. George, I've never seen anything like this. The competition has been ferocious. And the foods in a moment are about to become even more challenging. Yes, absolutely. Well, these guys were all very experienced, but they will be tested soon. They will be tested in speed, in capacity, and in their psychological discipline. Some of these foods may actually cause these people to step away from the table. Let's not waste any more time. Let's meet our next round of champion eaters. Our first competitor is a former world matzo ball eating champion. From Levittown, New York, Weighing in at 172 pounds, Don Moses Lehrman. <laughs> Next, the top female competitor is ranked by the International Federation of Competitive Eating. Hailing from Staten Island, New York, and weighing in at 142 pounds, Lorraine, Lorena Soros Rex Arrow. Our third competitor is a seven-time rib-eating champion from Sagamore Hills, Ohio, weighing in at 263 pounds, David Mo Ribs Molesky. A frozen yogurt-eating champion from Newburgh, New York, weighing in at 232 pounds, Justin Lean Mean Eating Machine Connolly. And finally, the 1998 Las Vegas hot dog eating champion from Henderson, Nevada, weighing in at 231 pounds, John the Belly Man Thompson. And there they are, George. This is the first woman we've seen competing tonight. Uh, do many women compete in the sport of competitive eating? Absolutely, and they compete cheek to jowl with the other competitors right at the table. We have had many championship eating women in the past, Takako Akasaka, Lorraine Al, and countless others. Let's find out what's in store for these champion eaters.
butter. Those are whole sticks of unsalted butter. Now, the eater who can gobble down as many whole sticks of butter before the time is called will be declared the winner of this round. It seems that butter would be easy going down, but George, it is rich, it's high in, in calories. What are the challenges that are going to face our competitors tonight on this? Well, tomorrow they'll count the calories, no doubt, but today it's all about speed. These are quarter-pound sticks of butter, and they should go down in about two bites, maybe three. Butter is a natural lubricant. Remember, we may see some big numbers here tonight. All right, the eaters are on their marks. Let's do it. this one, George. Well, you know, look for Don Lerman to get an early start. He has very strong jaws, and he has quick hands. John Thompson, as you can see, is already having a little bit of trouble chewing that. You can't chew too much. you got to chew a little and swallow. Don Lerman is on the end there. The very last competitor as you face the stage on the right. Don Lerman, nicknamed Moses. Yes, absolutely. Don Squirman Lerman, or Moses Lerman to his friends. He's eating quickly now, watch that. He has a sort of a rabbit-like jaw movement. So Lorraine Errol is actually engaged to be married to another eater in our competition tonight, Kevin Lipsitz. They're one of the few but not only competitive eating couples. Now take a look at Don, well out in advance. He just put down about a pound of butter. He's continuing, he is focused. This is not a problem for him at all. He competes every single day competitively. He eats one meal a day and he eats it competitively. Six hot dogs, 14 hot dogs. He eats, sets a timer, and when he steps away from the table, he's done eating for 24 hours. Meanwhile, as you look at Don, to his left is David Moribs Molesky. David has down two sticks of butter so far. Don, to his left, is in the lead with four sticks, but David would currently be in second place. In this kind of a scenario, if it's not clear what fraction of the butter remains, they may actually have to be weighed. Right now, we're in a little bit of a horse race for second place between John Thompson and Mo Ribs Molesky. A certain amount of butter ends up on the face of the competitors. Is it up to a judge then to decide whether the smearage, if you will, is within acceptable boundaries? Absolutely. The IFOCE and Richard Shea will make a determination on that. One minute to go now. Don Lerman out in front. You see that Mo Riggs Moleski, wearing the very fashionable goatee, it's actually a liability in competitive eating, and he has placed fashion over sport right now, and he may end up paying the price. Now, wait a second. David clearly pulling ahead from John Thompson. He's continuing to eat. He's not using much water. Water is okay in this sport. It does not swell up in your stomach when you're eating butter. But he is staying strictly with the butter. The butter is its own lubricant. Everybody's got their own strategy. Now, listen. You see the facial hair. John Thompson, Mo Ritz Molesky, Don Moses Lerman. You know, this is a little bit, well, what I'm saying here is it's not too pretty. But the only rule of conventional manners that stands at a competitive eating arena is don't talk with your mouth full, and that's really a matter of practicality. We are coming into the home stretch as we watch our competitors slow a bit. They were so quick to get out to a start, but now as we oh hear the Oh my buzzer, goodness. Don Moses Lerman, I would not say he coasted to a victory, but he did win a decisive victory here today in butter. Nothing official yet, but here it comes, yes! Don Moses Lerman! This is a man who's dedicated to beyond all reasonable thought. sustained quickness to his movements. Watch how Lerman gnaws away at that butter like a squirrel. I'm going to win this contest, go home with that $25,000 and send everybody packing. And that's for the record. 
And David Moritz Molesky pulls into second place and into the wild card round. Coming up, you won't believe what we've got in store when the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition, continues. Let's go! On March 15th. You're all going to die down here. The evil is rising. There's no way I'm going down there. The terror is spreading. And our chance for survival... <laughs> Running out. <gasps> Resident Evil. Ah! Rated R in theaters everywhere March 15th. Introducing the Taco Bell S Class, featuring the new steak quesadilla with marinated carne asada steak and three melting cheeses. It's a tasty triumph of culinary engineering. Bite into the new steak quesadilla today and see how it feels to think outside the bun. Lost at the end of the universe, the Robinson family tries to find their way home. Hang on! Matt LeBlanc and Heather Graham, the world broadcast premiere. Danger, Will Robinson, danger! Lost in Space, 8, 7 Central, tomorrow on Fox. Tonight, after the Glutton Bowl. Fox Sports John Hammerly dishes up the facts in our never-ending fight against fat. Are diet pills coming back as the answer to our battle of the bowl? Before you eat your next snack, watch Fox 4 News tonight at 9. What would happen if an SUV were raised by a family of sports cars? Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Hundred horsepower Mazda tribute. The SUV with the soul of a sports car. No sex plus the sponge bath equals one big contest. Catch Seinfeld tonight at 10:30 after Fox 4 News. Bobby shoots a hole in one. Son, you just might be the next Lee Trevino without the crazy accent. And a hole in the head. Willie Nelson. Am I bleeding from the ears? Now Hank's in Willie's clubhouse. He wants you to come over. On the next Dead Solid Perfect. Perfect. King of the Hill. Tonight at 11 on Fox 4. Fox 4 News at 9. Your news on your time. Fox 4 News at 9. Get it first. Fox 4 News at 9. A convenient time to watch your news. From the Capitol to the courthouse. Local, national, international news. From the Middle East to the Metroplex. Fox 4 News at 9. The first, the best, the most watched for a reason. Fox 4 News. Fox 4 News. Fox 4 News at 9. At 9. Fox 4 News at 9. This should help. Frank! Wake up, Frank! Frank, wake up! VoiceStream's family time plan gives you so many minutes, there's no limit to how you can use them. Don't pay more, just get more. I know where Dad is. Listen up, Texas Ford Truck Month is here. It's the biggest truck sales event of the year. Get a stampede of savings on a tough Ford truck. Round of great deals to save some big bucks. For payload and towing capacity, you can't beat Ford Super Duty. For five-star safety, you can't beat Ford Super Crew. Both come with 1,000 cash back or 0% financing. For the truck that you want at the price that you need, head down to the Truck Month Savings Stampede. Ow. People are shocked. It's usually a lot of... There's something very different about Brandy the Boxer. You've got to see it to believe it on Fox 4 News at 9. Some words should never be spoken. You're talking about the most reviled word in the English language. Some words should never be taught. I don't like when Jordan says it. I don't like when you say it. Fox Monday. I don't get to explore that because I'm white. One of the most controversial issues in our culture. Drop this line of discussion. Becomes the most important episode of the season. The word needs to go. And so does Danny Hansen for using it. All new Boston Public at 8, 7 Central, Fox Monday. Viewer discretion advised. From Santa Monica, California, it's the Glutton Ball. The world's greatest eating competition. 
now let's meet our next round of champion eaters. Our first competitor is a pasta eating champion from Marlboro, New Jersey. Weighing in at 274 pounds, Sabatino Sonny Manzi. Next, a world record pickled egg eater. From Grand Prairie, Texas, weighing in at 248 pounds, Lester Cool Hand Tucker. Our third competitor is a hot dog eating champion from Staten Island, New York, weighing in at 282 pounds, Dominic the Doganator Cardo. He's a chicken wing eating champion from Paulsboro, New Jersey. Weighing in at 344 pounds, Mark Big Rig Bojadin. And finally, a finalist at the Philadelphia Wing Bowl. He hails from Merchantville, New Jersey, weighing in at 281 pounds. Greg, guess is Maximus Drive. There they are. Now, what will they be eating? Let's find out. It's available in just about any deli in America, but you know, it's usually eaten thinly sliced in a sandwich, like for strami or corned beef. Tonight, our eaters are gonna have to eat the whole tongue. Now, they're cooked, but they're in their original form. George, what are the challenges on this one? This is pickled beef tongue. It's dense, it's rubbery, it's going to require an enormous amount of jaw strength, an enormous amount of chewing, but that's not all. It will also require capacity. It's a marathon event, and that's a lot of tongue down there. All right, eaters, on your marks. Three, two, one, eat. And they are off eating these tongues tip first, George. Absolutely, tip first is the rule, and it almost looks as if they're having a dialogue. A conversation with a tongue, George, is that what you're suggesting? I don't hear any words, but it appears that they're talking. Cassius Maximus in full regalia tonight. Clearly, he's a student of the classics. He brings a level of sophistication to the sport, but his dedication to the sport is what distinguishes him in my eyes. He eats the gassy foods and he endures that unique brand of discomfort. Sadly, that very dedication makes it nearly impossible to find a roommate on the road. Lester Tucker in the cowboy hat. 48 years old, he's from Grand Prairie, Texas. It's sort of interesting because he is someone who has distinguished himself in eating pickled quail eggs. He ate 42 in 60 seconds and earned a Guinness World Record for it. But this is obviously something very, very different. That was a sprint type event. This is more of a marathon. Absolutely. Those, you could pop those down. You can pop down a pickled quail egg. He has just got to manhandle that tongue. He's got to see if he can reduce it to nothing. Look at the Doganator. He's made a huge dent in that tub. The Doganator and Sonny Manzi are really distinguishing themselves right now. Listen, when people hear about competitive eating, they think it's simple. Just eat it. Masticate, gurgitate, satiate. Well, it's not that simple. You have to have the inner strength. You have to have the character to do this. Look at Sonny Manzi go. I'm very surprised by his performance that so far. Sonny Son Manzi is tearing off hunks of that tongue on the end. He's I mean, a, he is completely undaunted. Look at him. Gaseous Maximus, he seems to be heading a bacchanalia in ancient Rome. I am impressed by his laurels. This, will he win? That is yet to be seen. Meanwhile, as you look down the line, 
How would you handicap this thus far, George? I'm looking at the Doginator in first or second. Possibly Sonny Manzi making an amazing upset here today. Look at it. He's Sonny trying to burn Manzi. calories. He's trying to burn age-old technique. Try to burn those calories, loosen up space in the stomach. You know this brings up an instant. You have to get that food to settle. As you look at Gaseous Maximus, he now, used to work in a pizzeria, Gaseous Maximus. Sometimes he told me he'd purposely mess up a pizza so he could eat it. The Lester less Tucker from Texas. The sweat breaking out on his upper brow, George. You can see how this competition really steals their energy. It's taking its toll, but he's not slowing down. He's not going to step away from the competitive eating table. He's not going to walk out of the competitive eating arena until he has a victory. Let's not forget the pedigree of these eaters. These are not just five guys that we found from the street and put up there. They all have a long list of contests where they wouldn't be here. And that's why I say, don't forget the Doginator. The this Doginator, man. a rookie in this sport, but ranked very high. Great natural capacity, you were telling me. He does. He has an enormous stomach. He has an enormous ability to allow it to stretch. He won his first contest at Rikers Island. He's a correction officer. They are on, at the big house. And so you're not going to rattle this man. You are not going to rattle the Doginator. He's made a huge dent so far, as has Sabatino, Sonny, Manzi on the end. He's made a huge dent in that meat. Look at the huge hunks he continues to take out. From Sa Marlboro, New Jersey, this guy is not letting up a bit. Sabatino, Sonny, Manzi is coming out of nowhere in this competition. He's a rookie. Remember that. Look at that. He's feeling in his zone. He wants to get in. This would be an enormous upset. Sweat. He and the Doginator oh are God. facing off. Sweat Look at the way he's face. eating that meat, ladies and gentlemen. Look at Sonny Manzi. Sweat pouring off of his face as he continues to take huge bites out of that tongue. He certainly sent a message to the rest of these competitors. I want this victory. Get out of my way. Mark Big Rig Bojading. Look at him there in the black shirt as he continues to pour away. He's eating it like corn. He's chewing it like an ear of corn, ladies and gentlemen, but it's nothing of the sort. Meanwhile, Lester Tucker on the end. He continues to take hunks out of that tongue. If you are wondering, as you watch this event, what the substance is that's a different color from the pink meat at the base of the tongue, that is the fatty portion of the tongue. Many believe that is a delicacy, in fact, but rarely served in quite this fashion. Well, you can't tell me that these guys expect, after they've just choked down these beef tongues, that, that the fat of that beef tongue they have to consume as well. You know, I would not be surprised if we see them enjoy the fat because it's probably a little bit easier to chew and it may slide down the, uh, the throat that much easier. Now let's take a look at Sonny Manzi. He seems to be having trouble. He seems to be having some sort of difficulty getting a burp. He's not getting that food to settle like he'd want. I just fear that his enthusiasm for victory may put him in the position to have a reversal of fortune. How much of this is pacing? How much of this is just that? That if you get out to too big a start, that you can run into problems. Many try to eat a set amount of food in a certain period of time, they know their limits. Others look at their competitors and pace themselves against him. Greg Fry, Gaseous Maximus as he's called, continues on a steady pace. He would seem to trail though, both the Doginator and Sonny Manzi. One minute now, Sonny Manzi tearing away at that tongue. Lester Tucker and Big League Bojaday. Very consistent, very steady paces, but right now it's tough to distinguish whether or not they'll really finish in the top two. Sonny Manzi, a rookie to this competition, has almost completed that first beef tongue. Dodgenator. Look at him strip that beef. We are, we are very near the end of this contest, ladies and gentlemen. Sonny Manzi is going for it here. He is stripping that beef like a shredder. And the Doginator is taking the last bite of that first beef tongue. Ladies and gentlemen, we are down to the wire here. The Doginator is starting a second beef tongue. Hello. A second beef tongue. He is saying hello to another beef tongue right now. Dominic the Doginator Cardo starting a second beef tongue. Oh, my goodness. We're getting toward the end, ladies and gentlemen. There's time. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. That is all the time. What a competition. We have a winner. 
with one tongue completely consumed. Unbelievable. A few bites into his second tongue. Dominic, the Dogonator Cardo, is the glutton bowl tongue eating champion. That is an unbelievable display. A remarkable spectacle, and Dominic is moving on to the finals, George. That wiped him out, but you can see those aren't tears, that is sweat, that is the tears of joy. That was a gutty performance by Let's Sonny Let's hear Man. it for that fabulous competitor, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for him. Dominic Cardo going for the gusto. This quick start gave him the edge. It feels great to be the tongue champion. Sonny Manzi chewing his way into the number two spot and the wild card round. But the Dogonator advances to the finals and see what we've cooked up next when we return to the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition. <laughs> Yo, Terry. What is it, Alf? This buffet has no worms. It's, it's uncivilized. Well, then try something else. Oh, hey. Not my dollar, you overgrown throw rug. I thought a dollar had no value. Well, it does if you dial 10, 10, 2, 20. All calls up to 20 minutes or 99 cents. Get out of town. Yeah, and 7 cents a minute after 20. All right, no dollars. Got any cats? No. Furball. Jealous? Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. They're real cops. Free, LAPD. Fighting real crime. If you break the law, I will hunt you down and put you behind bars. And they're doing it. Three, two, one. It's showtime. In front of 15 million people. That's great TV. Robert De Niro. I'm not an actor. This is ridiculous. Oh. Eddie Murphy. You got two things on me bigger than my mouth, and one of them's pointing at your head right there. Ooh. Showtime. Showtime. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, March 15th. At Renner Center, it's easy to get the stuff you want because everybody's pre-approved. TVs, appliances, furniture, computers. You can get it today. Boom! Just like that. No credit? Boom! No problem! No credit? Boom! You're in! No credit? Boom! You got it! Hey! You guys can't say boom. Get your own word. Come in right now and get a week free when you pay for a week. Call 1-800-205-2005 for Renna Center. How? Nope. Keep thinking. A lot of companies put out promotional calendars. Great idea for 7-Up. But instead of models, I've decided to use the 7-Up truck drivers. It's all you, baby. It's all you. Love the camera. Yes. Very sweet. Elegant. You're trying to escape. You're trying to get out. Not, not you know, not that good. That's genius. Uh, sexy, kind of. If getting along with others was easy, then everybody would do it. It can be awkward or even a little threatening. Dealing with different people with their different accents, different customs, and different skin colors can take some getting used to. Well, make the effort. You've got nothing to lose, except maybe your prejudices. The more you get to know people as individuals, the more you realize we're all in this human race together. In just three days, NASCAR returns to Fox. Daytona 500 winner Ward Burton, Sterling Marlin, and Jeff Gordon. Only one will conquer The Rock. The Subway 400, Sunday, only on Fox. Fox Saturday, it's a two-hour cops marathon with the most exciting action from coast to coast. Show me your hands, man, show me your hands! From a chase that ends the hard way. Hey, he's down here. No, he's not moving. To a man armed with a knife and a bad attitude. How much you been drinking tonight? Nothing! A two-hour cops marathon, all new, starting on 8, 7 Central, Fox Saturday. This March, action! Imagine a world where puppets live among us. Are we rolling? Light up my... Oh, sorry. Cut! They've got egos. Check out these abs. Blah. They've got insecurities. I am not fat! And now they're gonna show the world. I think I just taught myself a new one. The stuff they're really made of. You know what I got to say to that? Dude, my dishes are in there. Seth Green and American Pie's Eugene Levy. Greg the Bunny. Coming this March to Fox. Blah. Welcome back to the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition. 
I'm Mark Thompson. With me is the expert on competitive eating, George Shea, chairman of the International Federation of Competitive Eating. George, let's get right back to it and meet the champion eaters who will face off in our next round of competition. Our first competitor is a two-time Canadian hot dog eating champion from Surrey, British Columbia. Weighing in at 215 pounds, Chris the Crusher Air. Next, a pizza eating champion from Wallingford, Connecticut. Weighing in at 342 pounds, Joe, Big Joe Menchetti. Our third competitor is a lobster eating champion from Peachtree City, Georgia, weighing in at 230 pounds, Mike, the Endless Pit Paladine. Next, a six-time onion-eating champion from Maui, Hawaii, weighing in at 185 pounds, Eric, the Onion King, Sigmund. Finally, the current Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Champion from Nagano, Japan, weighing in at 130 pounds, Takaro, the Tsunami Kobayashi. There they are. Will they be able to meet our challenge? Let's find out what food will be their fate. It's the American classic and perhaps the food most associated with competitive eating. George, tell us what we can expect in this round. This is the granddaddy of all eating contests. The buns are an issue, as are the dogs themselves. They're dense and flavorful, and they can be overpowering in quantity. But the story here tonight is Takiro Kobayashi, world champion of Japan with 50 hot dogs and buns. Many believe he is history's greatest eater. All right, let's see if our contestants can better any of those marks. Eaters, on your marks. Three, two, one, eat. George, fascinating to see Kobayashi, who you favored in this event. His well, technique involves eating the actual hot dog first and the bun after. He has abandoned his earlier style, which was dubbed Solomon Method, on July 4, when he broke the hot dogs in half and put them down almost in a conveyor belt-like mechanism. He is clearly going for something entirely different here. It's much more like traditional japanese which is separating hot, bun, hot dog from bun and dunking. This man has eaten 50 hot dogs and buns before. He is going to try to beat this record, and he's using non-traditional methods. Explain the water, George. What is that? They're, being, they're, they're dipping some of them, the hot dogs, and what's that water? The hot dog is very flavorful, but the bun is dry. It soaks up the saliva. It is very difficult to eat quickly. So you need the water to get the hot dogs down, but once they're down there, that water works against you. That's exactly right. And what you're seeing right now is there's a match for second place right now. Takiro Kobayashi, well in advance. Chris Ayer is going for a four-in-one method here. Kobayashi, this is very interesting. Now he's back to his traditional style. Watch this. This is textbook. Kobayashi snapping that hot dog in half and just inhaling it. Chris Ayer going for a handful, four at a time, buns and all. Eric Siegman clearly is not able to deal with the hot dogs as well as he'd like. Neither is Mike Paladine. But Takiro Kobayashi is in the zone. Now he is focused. He is beginning to eat the hot dogs like everybody knows he can. 
Can Big Joe Manchetti square off against Chris the Crusher Air? Can he bring that second place victory home? <laughs> well, we should mention again, Chris Air from Vancouver, British Columbia on the end, up to 10 hot dogs. Kobayashi in a class by himself at 19 dogs down. Big Joe Manchetti would be in third place, approaching his 10th hot dog. Now remember, Chris the Crusher Air has eaten hot 18 hot dogs and buns before in competition, so he is not near his capacity. Big Joe Menchetti, 14 and three quarter hot dogs and buns in competition. Clearly, Eric Siegman and Mike Paladine are slowing. But Takiro Kobayashi now is going to get into the area where he will wow America and he will wow the world because this is his zone. And you can see between Kobayashi and Chris Air is Mike Paladine. Paladine has had eight dogs down and he's adopted the style, if you will, of Kobayashi. 23 hot dogs and buns to Takiro Kobayashi of Nagano, Japan. Look at that stage right now. The guys who are the biggest guys, the guys you would think they are just going to inhale all the hot dogs in front of them, those are the guys who are trailing in this competition, the man who is the slightest of physical stature, and that is Takaro Kobayashi. Now remember, he has just once again broken the American record. No American, no Canadian, no European has ever broken the 24 hot dog match. He's just broken it right here. We have a real race for second place, though, ladies and gentlemen. Big Joe Menchetti, the 32-year-old, 340-pound competitor in position one, has down 12 hot dogs, while Chris Air from Vancouver, British Columbia, 27 years of age, 210 pounds, they're on the end. Chris has down 14, so second place critical to getting into the wild card round. And right now, that's almost a dead heat. Joe Manchetti, big Joe Manchetti at 14 and Chris Ayer at 14. Meanwhile, in the middle, as you look at the stage, Takeru Kobayashi is leaving everyone else in the smoke. Now watch Takeru. He has a this 30 hot dogs. One minute remains in what is now a race for second. Kobayashi started out slow, now he's speeding up. Watch how he jerks his head back. Watch how this doesn't distress him at all. We've got about a minute left. Look at this. Watch, he's going to do that. He pops it back. It just continues down. Chris the Crusher Air, sorely tested here by Joe. Even Mike Paladine is on his heels. But Takiro Kobayashi is going to walk away with a victory. He's going to more than double his competitors' numbers. Watch him now. No 31 distress. hot dogs for Takiro Kobayashi. Now wait, Joe. Wait one second. We have just seen Mike Paladine come back several moments ago. I thought it was impossible, but he has just come back to outpace Chris Ayer and Big Joe Manchetti. Wait a second. Second place is going to be very close. Big Joe Manchetti of now Connecticut. Now we indeed, George, have a dead heat for second place between Mike Paladine and Big Joe Manchetti. Takiro Kobayashi, no sweat, no distress, walking away with a first place victory here today. That is the time we have a winner. With 31 hot dogs. Look at that man. He is ready to go. An absolute champion, an athlete at the peak of his game. Prince. He's known as the Tsunami. He's known as simply Kobe. Let's take another look at Kobayashi and his strategy, which was right from the start, separating him from the rest of the field. The bun soaking wet, stuffed into his mouth, followed by the hot dogs, all 31 of them. Oh. <laughs> the judges rule that Chris Ayer finishes in second place and is on his way to the wild card round. Kobayashi heads to the finals, and when we come back, our competitors take on 1,500 pounds of food on the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition. Cube, Hamps, two unlikely partners. But I'm the boss. Okay, partner. I mean boss.
Do you the boss. 20 million in stolen diamonds. Just shoot out the back tire. Who you think I am, Mel Gibson? 24 hours to collect. Got a plan. Trust me. That wasn't part of the plan. Improvise. In. On March 8th. <laughs> Let your hair lie. You ain't got a four head, you got a five head. It's all about the Benjamins. I'm getting earrings like Alan Iverson, fool. Put them back. Wait it on. Starts Friday, March 8th. I chose to play the game. It didn't choose me. Sure, things weren't always easy. I knew drugs would get in the way. But the game taught me the fundamentals of life. Now I'm the teacher. Introducing the Taco Bell S Class, featuring the new steak quesadilla. With marinated carne asada steak and three melting cheeses, it's a tasty triumph of culinary engineering. Bite into the new steak quesadilla today and see how it feels to think outside the bun. Fox Tuesday on a special hour of That 70s Show. Kelso catches Jackie cheating with the cheese guy. Will he fight for her? You're mine, cheese pop. How did you know my nickname? Or is it over forever? You've been acting like I don't exist. I sure know you exist now that you French the whole mall. All new That 70s Show, part of a full hour starting at 8, 7 central, Fox Tuesday. His wife. We gotta move, we don't have much time. His daughter. Don't move for anything but the chopper. Where are you going? He wants me. And his moment of truth are here. Put down the weapon! 24, all new at 9, 8 central, Fox Tuesday. Truck Moth's here, the time's never been better to get an SUV from your Ford Outfitter. Truck Moth's the time to get outfitted with a best-selling Ford Sport Utility, like the smooth-riding Ford Explorer with an available third-row seat. Now open a new Explorer with 2,000 cash back or 0% financing. Get on board during Truck Month and save. All the best-selling Ford SUVs are running in the Truck Month Saving Stampede. Fox 4 News at 9. Your news on your time. Fox 4 News at 9. Get it first. Fox 4 News at 9. A convenient time to watch your news. Fox 4 News at 9. The most watched for a reason. Fox 4 News. Fox 4 News. Fox 4 News at 9. At 9. Fox 4 News at 9. After you buy your mobile audio or video system, who installs it? At Hawk, it's an experienced professional, not some guy who thinks it's cool to cut on your car. In fact, our installers are nationally certified. So who are you going to trust? The Hotshot or Hawk? Imagine your vehicle with portable consoles, flip-down screens, or custom-installed rear headrest screens. Mobile video packages start at just $2.99 and come with Hawk's lifetime installation warranty. Call 730 Hawk. Introducing the tough new crew cab long bed. It's the next frontier. Hey! 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 Wrap up your week with Good Day. We're going to find the connection between women and heart disease. And we'll help you find the perfect dress for your big day. Live and local on Good Day on Fox 4. Tonight at 10, a local animal control facility under attack again, this time by their own watchdog committee on Fox 4 News at 10. Meet Andy Richter. Andy? Say something. How does? Say an actual word. A normal guy. I work for a huge company, and today they shoved some new guy up my butt. Not literally. Who just can't seem to have a normal day. We've taken off all your arms and legs, but we still haven't determined the problem. I understand. Hey, I don't need your attitude. Anything's possible when Andy Richter controls the universe. Premiering Tuesday, March 19th on Fox. Welcome back to the Glutton Bowl. I'm Mark Thompson. With me in the booth tonight, the chairman of the International Federation of Competitive Eating, George Shea. George, let's meet the champion eaters for this round of competition. From Wisconsin, New York, a pizza eating champion weighing in at 421 pounds, Edward Cookie Jarvis. First annual matzo ball eating competition from Howard Beach, New York, 
Weighing in at 219 pounds, Bruce Bubba Stock. Our third competitor, a pasta eating champion from Pearl River, New York. Weighing in at 235 pounds, George Garbage Gut Plum. Our fourth competitor in this event is a rookie from Brooklyn, New York. Weighing in at 172 pounds, Robert Wilbur Field. Finally, a Palomeni eating champ, originally from Odessa, Ukraine. He weighs 165 pounds. Oleg, the great Jornitsky. they are, but are they up to the challenge? It's time to find out what they'll attempt to wolf down tonight. It's not ice cream. It's not yogurt. That's 60 gallons of mayonnaise. Now, I know people who can't even stand a teaspoon of mayo on a sandwich. Now, other than personal taste, what are some of the challenges that these guys are going to face? Mayonnaise is going to be much more difficult than people think. Remember, it's not a food, it's a sauce. Competitors are going to have to spoon it very quickly, but they're also going to have to suck it. They cannot let themselves try to chew. Well, with that said, it's time for our competitors to show us their stuff. Okay, our competitors are on their marks. Let's do it. Three, two, one, eight. So mayonnaise will bring with it, I would think, all kinds of unique challenges. We see these people not really so much eating or chewing, but actually scooping it down, sucking it down. Bruce Stock with it to his face. Ed Cookie Jarvis is no stranger to mayo. He actually ate mayo out of the jar as a child. What has proven historically to be the best way to eat a mayonnaise? Look at Oleg Jornitsky, forgive me, using the spoon that God gave him. He's already done with one plate. He's ahead of Cookie Jarvis, who's had experience in this sport. Oleg Jornitsky, another rookie. He's out of the Pelomeni circuit, but he wowed them there. He actually beat Hungry Charles Hardy and Don Lerman in that contest. He is well ahead of Cookie Jarvis, who everybody thought would lead this race. Well, when you look at the stage, Cookie Jarvis is the biggest guy. He's 421 pounds. You're thinking he's going to inhale the mayo. But the reality at this point is that Oleg Zornitsky, who is here by way of the Ukraine, now in Brooklyn, he is leading this competition. And he, as you look at the stage, is the slightest of the men. He's here today devouring this mayo. He's eating it, but he's also sucking it. He's well ahead of the competition. And Cookie Jarvis is really going to have to move and up his pace. If you have just joined us, that is not whipped cream you are seeing. That is mayonnaise that all of these men are scooping down as quickly as they are able. Cookie Jarvis has tried this. He said it produced a mayonnaise catatonia. It made him dizzy. He said you cannot drink water when you eat it because it's like oil and vinegar and it roils around in your stomach. These guys are going to have horrible after effects, but Jornitsky, Jarvis are plowing ahead. Well, Bruce Stock, who is the first competitor there, you can see him on the far left, says he's just eating, not tasting. Some gustatory athletes have the ability to eat without tasting, and it's a real advantage. George Glum going at it heavy. He's really scooping it up there like a bowl of ice cream, but no one seems to be able to catch this amazing rookie, Oleg Look at Jornitsky. Oleg Jornitsky licked that plate clean, George. He's remarkable. One competitor has dropped. One competitor has dropped. Bruce Stock has stepped away from the competitive eating table, ladies and gentlemen. This is dramatic. One minute to go, and this is now a race for second. 
This man is unstoppable. I've seen him eat several different foods. He seems to have a perfect balance between speed and capacity. Clearly, he loves this sport. He is voraciously scooping up spoon after spoonful of that mayonnaise and continuing just to take periodically a quick sip of water. He looks like a hungry child with unlimited amounts of free pudding, but it is not pudding that is mayonnaise. It's an emulsion of oil, vinegar, lemon, and egg, and it is tough on the system. We are approaching the end of this contest now, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone's pace has slowed, but as you look at Jarnitsky, even though he leads the field so substantially, he's continuing at a good clip as he finishes off what will be eight pounds of mayonnaise. Jarnitsky has clearly set a new world record in mayo. That is time, Jarnitsky, it would appear to me from this vantage point, clearly the winner, and yes, indeed, we have a winner with four bowls of mayonnaise. Oleg Jarnitsky, he is the glutton bowl mayonnaise eating champion. Oleg is gonna be moving on to our final round. He'll have a shot at the title and the grand prize. What a spectacle. Unbelievable, a gutty performance by all of these athletes, but Cookie Jarvis fell short of beating this new kid, Oleg Jornitsky. Even garbage gut glum with the applause for Oleg. The other competitors now all applauding him. They're in showing pure recognition of a superior they performance. Are, they are showing the respect that he is due. This is extraordinarily difficult. Let's take another look at his technique and how it all paid off. Oleg taking huge mouthfuls of that mayo, just sucking it up almost a bowl at a time, and watch as he licks it clean. Unbelievable. And into the wild card round, getting number two, Ed Cookie Jarvis in awe of Oleg's performance. Four bowls, that's pretty good. That's eight pounds of mayo. Oleg the Great Jarnitsky moving on to the finals. And coming up, a food so shocking you won't believe your eyes when the glutton bowl continues. Escape to a world of enchantment. Run with the wonders of nature. Swim in our crystal clear waters. See things you've never seen before in the complete Super Mario World. With 78 levels, it's Mario's biggest adventure ever. Now on Game Boy Advance. Come, spend time with us. Rated E for everyone. Who am I? You sure you want to know? If somebody told you I was just your average guy, not a care in the world, somebody lied. <laughs> Truth is, it wasn't always like this. There was a time when life was a lot less complicated. Can I take your picture for the school paper? Sure. In this lab, we have 15 genetically enhanced super spiders. There's 14. One's missing. Peter, are you all right? I'm fine. Pete, look, you're changing. I know I went through exactly the same thing at your age. No, not exactly. Peter, may I introduce my father, Norman Osborne? Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. What the hell was that? Whatever it is, somebody has to stop it. With great power comes great responsibility. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. Do I get to say thank you this time? Too much. You're not Superman, you know. In theaters everywhere, May 3rd. Some words should never be spoken. You're talking about the most reviled word in the English language. Some words should never be taught. I don't like when George says it. I don't like when you say it. Fox Monday. 
I don't get to explore that because I'm white. One of the most controversial issues in our culture. Drop this line of discussion. Becomes the most important episode of the season. The word needs to go. And so does Danny Hansen for using it. All new Boston Public at 8, 7 Central Fox Monday. Viewer discretion advised. It began as a hit. Mulder, is that you? Became a phenomenon. And after nine seasons, it's about to become legend. Oh, why wasn't this an X-File? Because I know things you don't. March 3rd, the X-Files will begin the most startling tale of all. Are you gonna tell me what this is? It's a piece of the space craft. How it will end. The final 11 consecutive original episodes that will stop at nothing and reveal everything. The X-Files, beginning Sunday, March 3rd on Fox. Lost at the end of the universe, the Robinson family tries to find their way home. Hey, God! Matt LeBlanc and Heather Graham, the world broadcast premiere. Danger, Will Robinson, danger! Lost in Space, 8, 7 Central, tomorrow on Fox. From Santa Monica, California, it's the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mark Thompson. With me is George Shea, chairman of the International Federation of Competitive Eating. It has been an intense night of competition thus far, and if you're just tuning in, here's what you've missed. Three, two, one, eight. First up was the egg competition, where our winner down 38 eggs. Next was butter, and the champ ate seven whole sticks of butter. In the tongue round, the winner started his second tongue before time expired. And the hot dog round featured a dominant performance by Japan's eating champion. Finally, mayonnaise, where the winner consumed eight pounds of mayo. Let's meet the champion eaters for this round of competition. Our first competitor holds world record for eating both donuts and hard-boiled eggs. He hails from Cayuga Falls, Ohio, weighing in at 182 pounds, David Kundal Okarma. Next, a chicken-eating champion from Ansonia, Connecticut, weighing in at 247 pounds, William Black Ty Stobierski. This man is the reigning jalapeno king of Texas, hailing from Arlington, Texas, and weighing in at 311 pounds. Jed, the Jalapeno King Donahue. Our fourth competitor is a four-time regional hot dog eating champion. From Rutherford, New Jersey, weighing in at 269 pounds, David Bossman Condi. And finally, he's a hoagie eating champion from Finksburg, Maryland, weighing in at 260 pounds, Stephen the Appetite Addict. And there they are. Now, what tasty treat will they be taking on? Let's find out. probably tried to eat more than our share of fast food burgers at one time or another. It's not quite as easy as it looks, is it? No, and especially under these circumstances. But it's not the burger itself that's going to cause the trouble, it's the bun. It's dry, it's difficult to eat quickly, and it swells up in the stomach. We're going to see some unusual strategies here today to fight that challenge. All right, to win this round, the eaters are going to have to consume as many burgers as they can in this timed event. All right, our competitors are on their marks. Let's get to it. Three, two, one, eight. And we are underway. And you 
we're going to see some very distinct differences in the styles of these competitors. Am I right, George? Each one of them has to handle the water and bun issue. They might not be having trouble now because their mouth has been full of saliva, but soon the bun will soak it up. They are going to have to figure out how they balance their intake. Meanwhile, Black Ty Stoberski on the far left had his teeth in effect on hot dogs, those Nathan's Hot Dogs contests. Absolutely. He has competed in hamburgers. He's an active Elvis impersonator. He is called Black Tie for the obvious reason that he wears a tuxedo t-shirt when he competes, but his hair is also jet black, perfect for a formal affair. Well, the king would be proud to see him tossing down these burgers in such great fashion. By the way, I mentioned the hot dogs, but he does have a current hamburger eating record. 28 hamburgers in two and a half hours that he set just two years ago. Now take a look at Jed Donahue, second from the right. Here is the jalapeno king of Texas. He has eaten 152 jalapeno peppers in 15 minutes. That is his area. No one could beat him in the world. However, this is a very, very different contest. On the far right is David Coondog O'Karma. He was an eater in the 1970s. He went into retirement, recently came out of retirement. He has done donuts. He has done hot dogs. He has done pizza. So he's absolutely focused. He's absolutely disciplined. He wants his victory. He's married with three kids, and one can imagine what dinner time is like at his house. He finds himself in second place in this competition right now. The first place spot is in a dead heat between David Condick and Jed Donahue. Five burgers down unofficially thus far. There is no ketchup. There are no condiments of any kind permitted in this competition as that would aid in the lubrication of these burgers as they went down. Condick and Donahue lead this competition right now, trailing by just one burger behind is David O'Karma. David O'Karma has ripped his shirt. I'm not certain if that was the force of expansion in his belly, an act of desperation, an act of bravado, but he has torn his shirt to cries of adoration from the crowd. Jed Donahue, who again is Mr. Jalapeno, he leads this competition right now with seven burgers down. Another, he is untouched by any other competitor right now. Another interesting point we have to raise. Jed has competed three times with a perfect record in the Big Texan Steak Challenge. 72 ounces of steak, one baked potato, shrimp, and a side salad. He goes for the sides first. Maybe it's that beef experience that is coming to play here today. We should mention that Jed Donahue is in a dead heat now with David Condick Sr., who has pulled now to a dead heat, seven burgers apiece. Condick. 48 years old, Donahue, 20 years his junior. Listen, his jaw is older than it was five years ago when he started this sport. That's got to be there. Wear and tear does play a role. Just under a minute to go, and at this point, you'd have to favor Donahue. But Stephen Bucket style addicts, he wasn't the Polak Johnny's Polish sausage eating contest champion. He wasn't the ice cream eating champion for nothing. This man may come back, but this is an extraordinarily close race. We have David O'Connor, we have Jed Donahue, Steve Addicts, David Condick, neck and neck. David Condick pulling ahead right now. David Condick has just moved into the lead over Jed Donahue. I mentioned Condick. 20 years the senior of Donahue, and right now he is one burger ahead. This is going to be very interesting. I'm surprised. I am very surprised that Steve Bucket Style Addicts is in third right now. But David O'Karma also could come back. Look at him eating ferociously there. Look at him ravaging that hamburger, continuing to eat in the face of a possible defeat. All our competitors are beginning to slow, obviously. The weight of this competition and the literal weight of the food they've consumed has got to be catching up to them. That is time. The judges are going in. Jed Donahue is declared the oh winner. Oh, my goodness. Jed Donahue with 11 burgers is the Glutton Bowl hamburger eating champion. An absolute upset. He's going on to the final round. Jalapeno King of Texas. Jed Donahue showing his strength today. The Jalapeno King has proved he can do the burger circuit tonight. Let's check out the deciding moment one more time. This was ever so close all the way. Donahue dunks the burger in water, downs it, and he keeps it down. 
I uh, almost lost it uh, about four and a half minutes into it. I just started gagging. You had to hold it, stop eating for a while, and then uh, resume. And after I got through that, I thought I was going to win. Meanwhile, David Kundog of Karma taking a very close second place and advances to the wild card round. It feels good to be the Burger King. I, I can't wait to uh, go to the next round. Coming up, 60 feet of food when the Glutton Ball, the world's greatest eating competition, continues. On March 1st... It goes against science. You want to be the guy who goes against science? It begins. Oh, God. The greatest challenge the world will ever witness. No sex for 40 days. You won't last a week. You think you can go 40 days? I might go the distance. I like this. How long could you last? You could slam that door in my face if you want, but I'll just be on the other side even hotter. 40 days and 40 nights. Slam it! Rated R. Special sneak preview Saturday. What's gotten into Hot Pockets? More, 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 more filling. More, more to love. Now Hot Pockets brand are stuffed with more tasty, cheesy filling than ever. More filling. More, more to love. Hot Pockets. The critics have spoken. The best new mid-season drama isn't on ABC, CBS, NBC. It's on cable channel FX. Playtime's over. The Shield, coming in March, only on FX. In just three days, NASCAR returns to Fox. Daytona 500 winner, Ward Burton, Sterling Marlin, and Jeff Gordon. Only one will conquer The Rock. The Subway 400, Sunday, only on Fox. Tonight on Fox 4 News, kidnapped by Islamic extremists, Wall Street Journal reporter Daniel Pearl is murdered. Plus, find out what brought Andrea Yates to tears in court today. People are shocked. It's usually a lot of... And when this dog licks you, you stay licked. See why right after the Glutton Bowl tonight on Fox 4 News. What would happen if an SUV were raised by a family of sports cars? Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 200 horsepower Mazda Tribute. The SUV with the soul of a sports car. No sex, plus the sponge bath equals one big contest. Catch Seinfeld tonight at 10.30 after Fox 4 News. Bobby shoots a hole in one and a hole in the head. Willie Nelson. Am I bleeding from the ears? Next King of the Hill. Tonight at 11 on Fox 4. The 2002 Ford Focus. It's one car people are raving about. Since right now, you can get it with a six-disc in-dash changer, along with 10 CDs, all at no cost. Plus, for a limited time, you can get 1,000 cash back or 0% financing on 2002 models. Get a 2002 Ford Focus, and you'll have plenty to rave about. See your Texas Ford dealer for details. Shine, shine, shine. Want to keep your color-treated hair shining bright? Shine, shine. Give it Pantene Color Revival Conditioner. The Pantene Pro Vitamin Formula with Color Shine makes your color treated hair up to 60% healthier for brilliant, luminous Pantene Shine. Keep your color shining bright with the Color Care Collection from Pantene Pro V. So healthy, you'll love your hair. Introducing the tough new crew cab long bed. It's the next frontier. Hey! 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 Wrap up your week with Good Day. We're going to find the connection between women and heart disease. And we'll help you find the perfect dress for your big day. Live and local on Good Day on Fox 4.
Fox Saturday, it's a two-hour cops marathon with the most exciting action from coast to coast. Show me your hands, man. Show me your hands. From a chase that ends the hard way. Hey, he's down here. No, he's not moving. To a man armed with a knife and a bad attitude. How much you been drinking tonight? Nothing. A two-hour cops marathon, all new, starting on 8, 7 Central, Fox Saturday. Welcome back to the Clutton Ball, the world's greatest eating competition. Now let's meet the champion eaters who are going to face off in our next event. First up in this event is the 1998 Kingston, New York, Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Champion. From Palisade Park, New Jersey, weighing in at 231 pounds, Ed Omnivorous Chiaffi. Our second competitor is a matzo ball eating champion from Brooklyn, New York. Weighing in at 377 pounds, Hungry Charles Hardy. He's the wing bowl defending champion from Woodbury Heights, New Jersey. Weighing in at 289 pounds, Bill El Wingador Simmons. And finally, the current female champion of the ninth annual wing ball from Philadelphia, weighing in at 211 pounds, Donna, Belly Donna, Billy. There they are. Right now on the stage behind me, you can see the crew is setting up the food for our next event all 60 feet of it. Each of our competitors is gonna take on their own 15 foot, 12 pound sushi roll. As if 15 feet of sushi wasn't challenging enough, each one of those rolls contains two one foot long sections of pure wasabi, the Japanese hot mustard. The object is gonna be to get through as much of that roll as possible before time is called. George, how are these eaters going to possibly tackle this challenge? That is an enormous amount of sushi. It's clearly going to be rough sledding for all the eaters. 15 feet of sushi is 15 feet of rice. They have to limit their water clearly. Time to see what's going to happen. All right, let the eating begin. Here we go. You gotta take a look at Hungry Charles Hardy. He actually has eaten sushi in Japan competitively with Kazutoyo Arai, the most experienced and the greatest capacity. And that is no easy task. With this event, the goal may not be to make it all the way to the end of that 15-foot roll. Rather, get farther down the roll than your fellow competitors. George, break the roll down for us. It's 15 feet. It has five different types of sushi, vegetables, spicy shrimp, wasabi, egg, and crab and avocado. And those types of sushi are separated in one foot portions. Two of those one foot portions are what we call the wasabi zone. The wasabi zone may well be what stops these eaters in their tracks. Pure Japanese hot mustard. At the average sushi place, you might eat half a teaspoon or so. These competitors face two one foot long sections of wasabi. I don't know if they can make it. And Charles Hardy is the only competitor with any real experience with sushi. The interesting thing about Hungry Charles Hardy, he actually traveled to Japan, he competed in this event, and when he came back, he told me, I know the secret of the Japanese. He would not tell me that secret, but he claims to know it. Donna has lost 50 pounds since the wing bowl. Well, listen, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, and she's just doing a little research. <laughs> well, she's the only woman out there. How does being a woman affect her stomach capacity? Some people say that everybody's stomach is the same size and then it expands or contracts depending on what you eat and your eating habits. I disagree. A man like El Wingador, he was born to eat, he was made to eat, and he's doing what he was born to do. Well, each of them appear to be slowing now, including El Wingador. 
He looks like he's running into trouble with that roll at the end, George. Well, you know, you see him leaning over with his elbows on the tables, and I get a little bit nervous, not because of the apparent breach of manners, but because that may be an indication that he's feeling the pressure in his stomach at this juncture. I am beginning to see the signs of struggle in multiple competitors here. Hungry Charles Hardy, I've seen it before. When he's leaning over, he's trying to work through some of the bulk in his stomach and essentially reposition it through a use of his stomach muscles, using the abdomen essentially to tighten and reshape the food in his stomach. George, there are signs of struggle down there. We said there was a big possibility that the competitors would not make those 15-foot sushi rolls disappear, but they might not even make it halfway. This could be the one food that gets the better of them. Donna Billick seems to be slowing measurably, and hungry Charles Hardy. We thought he'd be the favorite. He's in trouble. Belly Donna seems to have hit the wasabi portion of the roll. Look at the effects of that wasabi on Charles Hardy's face. I see him shaking his head. He's feeling a little bit of difficulty. Indeed, you are right. Even hungry Charles Hardy has slowed. That wasabi, which we mentioned, comes in one foot chunks as they try to consume that 15 feet of sushi. Looks like hungry Charles Hardy might be fighting a losing battle. I'm gonna say it, I don't know what the judges will say, but the big man has fallen here today, an incredible upset. He has suffered urges contrary to swallowing. One minute to go, three competitors remain. This throws it open to the it's rest of the crowd. It's a wide open field for the other three competitors. I will remind you, we have just lost the favorite in this competition. A hungry Charles Hardy had to step away. The big man went down because he couldn't keep it down, and now Donna's in trouble. Ed Chiaffi trying not to look as Donna disqualifies herself. She has stepped away from the table, it appears. The sushi has taken its toll. And the crowd excited as only two competitors remain. If both Bill Simmons, El Wingador, and Edward Chiaffi can keep in the competition for the last few moments here, they will both advance the next round. These gentlemen have put on quite a spectacle, as have all the competitors in this competition. These two look weary. Time is called, and the judges, without hesitation, give the competition to Bill L. Wingador Simmons. Bill Simmons is your winner. He's a big man, and he accomplished a big task here tonight. Six foot five, 300 pound, Bill Simmons. An incredible performance. That may be the hardest earned medal that we've seen tonight thus far. He really gutted it out there tonight. It was hard, he never slowed, he was steady, and he's going to the finals. Here's another look at the moment of victory, George. Bill Simmons chokes down 3.8 feet of sushi. I think I had my full sushi for a while. <laughs> And then Chiaffi finishes 2.5 feet and moves to the wild card round. Coming up, you won't believe what they'll be taking on when the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition, continues. Huh? Psst, down here. There's a new chunky soup. Mom? Huh? Don't fumble that bowl, baby. Whoa. <laughs> Chunky Chicken and Dumplings is loaded with big chunks of chicken, veggies, and hearty homestyle dumplings to fill you up right. Hey, your head's on my shoulders. Your head. Your, head. your head's on my shoulder, man. Dumplings. New Campbell's Chunky Homestyle Classics. Like Mom used to make. Anything else, sir? George W. gets help from the world's best witches. I said Benny Loud, not Benny Hanna, get room. Melissa Joan Hart guest stars. All new Mad TV, late night Saturday. Fox Sunday, saddle up for the rootness tootness night of comedy on TV. All new episodes kick off with a King of the Hill hour long special. Bluegrass, con. That inbred music is designed so only people with six fingers can play it. The Simpsons. I took the liberty of creating a new hero for your wall. And a Malcolm in the Middle showdown. Okay. 
for even. Followed by bonus episodes of The Simpsons and Bernie Mac on a special night. It's on now. It all starts at 7, 6 Central, Fox Sunday. Remember all those cute puppet shows growing up? You know what I got to say to that? Dude, my dishes are in there. Well, this isn't one of them. <laughs> Seth Green and American Pie's Eugene Levy. Show me the bunny. Greg the Bunny, a new comedy coming this March to Fox. Thank you so much. That's just a hug, right? Eh? We are back, everyone, and we're down to the wild card round and another chance for our runners-up to win a seat in the finals. Each of the competitors who finished second in our previous events is going to compete in this round for one and only one wild card spot. But there's a catch. Chances are good that the food they'll be eating hasn't been on any grocery list you've ever seen. The eaters have no idea what it is, and if they're in any way uncomfortable or uneasy, they can choose not to compete tonight. Let's bring out all of our second place eaters for the wild card round. from the mayonnaise round, Ed Cookie Jarvis. Our third competitor from the hamburger round, David Coondog of Karma. Our fourth competitor from the butter round, David Mo Ribs Molesky. Our fifth competitor from the sushi round, Ed Omnivorous Tiafi. Our sixth competitor from the hot dog round, Chris, the Crusher Air. And finally, our seventh competitor from the Tongue Round, Sabatino, Sonny, Manzi. Now, to earn that coveted seat in the final round, these eaters are going to be taking on a food that most people would not even think of putting in their mouth. Are you ready? Let's see what's in store. baked potatoes. Those are Rocky Mountain oysters. What are Rocky Mountain oysters? They're not oysters, are they? I've eaten a lot of seafood. I've never seen anything like that at the raw bar. These are indeed the cojones of a beef steer. And our competitors must get over their initial shock and focus on the basics. These are simply high protein, low carbohydrate meals. These are cooked, we should mention. Very important to underscore that probably in this wild card round. The competitor who is the first to finish their plate moves on to the finals. Russell Mad Dog Macover. Are you in or are you out? I'm ready. I am in. Ed Cookie Jarvis. I am ready. Ah! Ed Cookie Jarvis, are you in or are you out? He is in. David Kundog Okarma. Are you in or are you out? He is in. David Mo Ribs Molesky. Are you in or are I you out? Demands. I'm in, baby. I'm in. Ed Omnivorous Tiafi. Are you in? I'm in it to win it, baby. Chris the Crusher Air. Are you in or are you out? Canada's in it. Sabatino Sonny Manzi. Are you in or are I'm you out? I'm in it to win it. None of our competitors are ducking out. Everyone wants to participate in this rather bizarre wild card round. If I can just remark, I mean, this is really uh, maybe a science of mind over matter as well as just consuming the food. Very unusual food, very unusual category, but it boils down to the same thing they've been eating all night. This is beef, and they can eat it. 
So the competitors we're seeing on this stage have virtually no experience consuming this in an event like this. Absolutely not, because this is the entire oyster. When these are served in restaurants, they are usually sliced up, they are battered and fried. They are cooked, I want to mention that again, but I think that may be an incidental point as we get underway. Okay, the eaters are on their marks. without question. It is the first competitor to consume all the food on the bowl. Absolutely, and if you expected any hesitation, put that out of your mind. Sonny Manzi is over that bowl like a jackal. But David Molesky already shaking his head to sort of suggest that the taste may not be to his pleasing. It may be too tough for him. He may be struggling with the psychology. Look to Ed Cookie Jarvis. He's a steak-eating champion. Look to Sonny Manzi at early lead. Manzi is the one who did so well with the beef tongue. You can see him on the end there in black. Well, the burger-eating champ, or at least runner-up in the competition to make it this wildcard round, is David Kundog Okama. He won in the hamburger-eating uh, competition, at least finished second to make him eligible for the wild card. Well, he actually sustained esophageal stress during that preliminary. He's still ready to compete. He's hoarse. He doesn't care. He wants the finals. He's willing to do what it takes. I'll remind you, the big man up there, Edward Cookie Jarvis, won with the mayo. He finished second in that mayo-eating competition, the mayonnaise. This is a very, very different animal than the mayonnaise. Well, he's coming right off of the mayo, and he said that when he finished that competition, it was as if he had a jiffy lube. So perhaps that will facilitate the passage of this very difficult beef. Again, these are Rocky Mountain oysters, the part of the bowl you like to think the least about, perhaps. Might be one way to think of it. Sonny Manzi, he came out of the beef tongue that was even more dense, even more difficult to eat, he was a real wow in that earlier contest. He was a taste bud away from winning. Now we hope, or he hopes, he can go on. Listen, a couple surprises here. Chris Ayer, Ed Chaffee, David Molesky, apparently out front, tied with Cookie Jarvis. I'm a little surprised Sonny Manzi isn't out in front. A pretty good pace being kept by all the competitors. You can see Russell Mockover continues a very steady pace. A bite, then a drink. A bite, then a drink. He was your egg-eating runner-up, I'll remind you. David Molesky and Chris Ayer pulling into the front. Very unusual, very unusual. They are just showing an extraordinary determination here. Chris Ayer says he's done! Chris Ayer, no sooner do you mention him, Chris Ayer says he's finished, he's the winner, and Chris Ayer will advance to the finals, the winner of the Wild Card Air Round. Canada. Air Canada is going on to the finals. The Crusher showing determination, coming back from a brutal defeat. He's going to the finals. Remarkable. As you look at all those competitors, so many big men, so many men of such enormous physical stature, but the winner of this wild card event is a man who's frankly of normal size, Chris Air, who seemed to have the mental determination to make it happen. Well, listen, they say Rocky Mountain oysters are an aphrodisiac. I want to be nowhere near him right now. <laughs> Let's check out Chris Air's winning form one more time. He just tears through a total of five oysters. I've worked pretty hard. I, I deserve this. I've, uh, I've dedicated a lot of uh, my time to this. Uh, I was ready. So Chris Ayer moves to the finals. Who will be the Glutton Bowl champ? Find out next on the Glutton Bowl, the world's greatest eating competition. Track masters. Check them out, it's the new A5s, you gotta rock them. They even put a zone in the league to try to stop them. Matter of fact, call him the king, the way he breaks down the defense. It's like he got the ball on the string, and he will blow by you fast. Penetrate and dish it off or let it go high off the glass. Uh, all you need is a pair of these, nothing else. Your hesitation is stopping pop will be something else. Even on the court, we stay fly, Jada and AI. Make sure you go get the A5. Uh-huh. Super Troopers patrols a highway paved with laughs. The gags come fast and furious. Do we look like the two dumbest guys in the world to you? Broken Lizard Super Troopers. Rated R. Now playing only in theaters. You think you have it rough? 
Ever try fighting a dozen lurkers at once? Those guys make purse snatches seem like Boy Scouts. You fight any 300-foot robots today? Uh-huh. <laughs> Didn't think so. It looks like your partner's doing all the work. Maybe it looks that way to the untrained eye. Huh? Hey, big guy! <laughs> Been there long? A new legacy is born. Ready to eat for everyone. You smell some... What? Fear. I'm freaking out, man. Super Troopers. They're coming back! Call the vehicle over! He's already pulled over! He can't pull over any farther! Reddit R. Now playing only in theaters. Esquire Magazine asks, if making funny television is so damn hard, how does Conan O'Brien's former sidekick make it look so easy? Thanks for walking me back to my room, Laurie. This is me. And that's you. Yes, it is. Well, good night. <laughs> and you too. Introducing Andy Richter Controls the Universe, a new comedy premiering Tuesday, March 19th on Fox. Get ready for the original rush. Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker in the box office hit that started it all. Which one of y'all kicking? A special Wednesday movie. Don't you ever touch a black man's radio, boy. Rush Hour, Wednesday at 8, 7 central on Fox. Next on Fox 4 News, new evidence kidnapped reporter Daniel Pearl is dead. Plus, student violence leads to a lockdown at a local high school and a special pooch with a supersized smooch. Fox 4 News is next. Their position is uncharted. We're lost. Now, the Robinson family will travel beyond the frontiers of adventure to find their way home. Hang on! Matt LeBlanc and Heather Graham. The world broadcast premiere. Danger, Will Robinson, danger! Lost in Space at 8, 7 Central tomorrow on Fox. Welcome back to the Glutton Bowl, everyone. It's all come down to this. Our final round of competition. Seven preliminary events, one wild card round, eight Glutton Bowl records set. Mark Thompson along with George Shea here tonight. These eaters have already eaten more in a few minutes than some people eat in a week. How stuffed are these competitors at this point, George? Well, clearly they would all like to push away from the table right now if they could, especially Chris Ayer, who had that extra round, the wild card round. But the title here is so important, it's a point of pride. The person who walks away here tonight this year's greatest eater. Once again, let's meet the Glutton Bowl champions. Our first competitor, the egg champion, Eric Badlands Booker. Our next competitor, the butter champion, Don Moses Lerman. Our next competitor, the hamburger champion, Jed, the jalapeno king Donahue. Our next competitor, the mayonnaise champion, Oleg, the great Jornitsky. Our next competitor, the sushi champion, Bill El Wigador Simmons. Our next competitor, the hot dog champion, Takeru Tsunami Kobayashi. Our next competitor, the tongue champion, Dominic the Doginator Cardo. And finally, the winner of our wild card round, Chris. The Crusher Air. There they are, the eight Glutton Bowl champions. George, they've made it this far. They all have separate disciplines, in effect, that have brought them here. What is your prediction for what's going to happen? Well, this is exciting. Clearly, this is the elite of the sport, but you have to look to Takaru Kobayashi for number one. The IFOCE rankings just came out. Takaru on the top, no surprise. But keep an eye out for Jornitsky. 
I'm not suggesting second. I'm saying keep an eye out for Jornitsky as a possible threat to Kobayashi. From there, I'd throw in a wild card, maybe Don Lerman. With that said, let's see what stands between all of these hearty eaters and victory tonight. A bucket of brains. Not a pretty sight. Those are cow brains. Now, George, some consider them to be a delicacy before everyone freaks out. In many cultures, they're a delicacy. Others consider them disgusting. What challenges are there to eating brains? Think of it as a pate, a liver pate. It might be somewhat dry, but it's going to have that consistency. Now, they're going to have a great deal of difficulty getting this down. I say use the water. This is the finals. Go for the gold. Okay, the eater that has finished the most brains when time is called will become the Glutton Bowl champion. On your marks. becomes downright bizarre. Take a look at Jornitsky. He is shoving them down his mouth with no difficulty whatsoever. None of these competitors seem in the least bit daunted by the prospect of eating brains. Bill Simmons, look at him hunched over, scooping brains into his mouth. Takeru Kobayashi is eating it in an almost delicate fashion. He seems to have complete control over these brains. Kobayashi again, so dominant in the hot dog competition. Look at him, look at Takeru Kobayashi with the swoop. He swoops it into his mouth, he stuffs it in and it pops right down into his stomach. Zornitsky picking up entire palms full of brains, stuffing them in. This is such a different competition than what we, when we saw him down four 32-ounce bowls of mayonnaise earlier tonight. He seems equally adept at brains, and he seems to be picking over his plate, almost searching for the most delectable brain. And don't forget Don Moses Lerman. He himself is making something of a charge. Now look at Chris the Crusher Air, Air Canada. He had so much difficulty getting to this table, and here he is trying. Chris the Crusher Air, you'll recall the wild card winner. He is oh. here and making quite a show, but he's sort of a fan favorite. The crowd seems to really enjoy watching him work. Takeru Kobayashi, look at the dance now. That is physical poetry. This is a man at the best of his game. Look at that dance, Takeru Go! Takeru Kobayashi, from hot dogs to brains, it doesn't seem to matter. He is dominant thus far. Chris, Chris Harris, the Crusher Air he has says no away more. From the table. I want to draw your attention to Eric Booker, the huge 404-pound, 31-year-old competitor on the end, is going right at it. The Doganator seems to have met his match in a 10-pound plate of cow brain. This is a very interesting race. It appears that Jed Donahue has slowed. This does not have the hot taste of the jalapeno peppers. I think he'd like that flavor right now. We are definitely seeing these competitors slow. The Doganator, Dominic Cardo, you can see him looking at the plate, reflecting. He has to be very careful. He does not want to continue eating if he would risk something else happening. Absolutely. And also take a look at the wing, El Wigandor. Philadelphia Wing Bowl eating champion. Remember, the end of the match is his portion of the match. He walked, he waited, he used strategy, and that's why he's here. El Wingador, of course, unmatched endurance in the sushi eating contest. And he continues hunched over that plate of brains here tonight. It's interesting. The competitors Duncan. check each other out, George. They absolutely do. They keep an eye on each other. Takaru Kobayashi is approaching 10 pounds of cow brains, ladies and gentlemen. Let me state, that is a world record. This whole leg may have met his match. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he fought down a mighty 
mighty sway upward, ladies and gentlemen. He fought down that reversal, and he continues. I think he needed that burp. I think that was a burp that had to come out. He got it. He's back at the plate. Takeru Kobayashi has set a new world record. There is no doubt about that. Jed, the jalapeno king, Donahue has slowed to a near stop. The Doginator, his head dropped, not in shame, but clearly he's struggling with the brain. Takeru Kobayashi looks up for a moment to assess his competition. Eric Badlands Booker on the far side of the table seems to be going at a good pace. Oleg Zhornitsky appears to be in second, but Don Lerman is right there, neck and neck. We've lost one competitor already in Chris Eyre. Everybody else is still at the table, although the Doginator has not taken anything in in the last couple of minutes. He's staying at the table. It's a noble effort. Perhaps I'll have more room later. Perhaps I won't, but I'm not giving up. But let me tell you something, he's done. How is it possible that Takeru Kobayashi, as you look at that table, the man who is certainly the slightest of stature, could be so far out ahead of all the other competitors, George? He's dancing, he's in a rhythm, he's in a zone, he cannot hear anything. It's him and the food. This is a rock star. This is a professional athlete at the top of his game. He's gonna go and he's gonna break records and he's gonna blow people's minds here today. One minute to go. El Wingador seems to be slowing. We are approaching the wire here. Eric Badlands Booker is picking up the cake. He is picking up the pace. He is not going to stop. Don Lerman is on the sidelines. He's got no more. Oleg Zhornitsky proving that he is Rookie of the Year, bar none. Takeru Kobayashi oh has just asked for oh a mega player's brain. History is being made here tonight in the Barker Hangar in California. I have never seen anything close to this performance. This is unbelievable. This man is making history before our eyes. Even Chris Ayer, who was knocked out of the competition, the wild card round winner, applauding Takaru as he asked for another plate of brain. He is standing back and he is watching the master. Takaru Kobayashi assuming the role that he knows so That is time. Unbelievable. That is time. A look question. The prince, the tsunami, the king of competitive eating, ladies and gentlemen, Takeru Kobayashi! We have just witnessed an incredible spectacle in this world of competitive eating. Santa Monica, California, for George Shea. I'm Mark Thompson. Good night, everyone, and thank you. on Fox 4 News at 9. This murder is an act of barbarism. Terrorists take the life of the kidnapped American...